Hello, my sweet reader friends, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new video, and welcome to a new beautiful fall day. This year has gone by so ridiculously and extremely fast. It's literally gonna be Christmas in like two weeks. Just watch. I'm going to be picking out Christmas books very soon. That is wild. Today we are doing another blindly choosing my monthly TBR. You guys have been loving it. I've been loving doing it. So why not just keep it going? So we have our books here turned over so I don't know what they are. I'm going to pull up our number generator. And I've also been doing this thing where I put all of my monthly TBR in like a digital list because I don't always have like all, of, I mean for this challenge I do, but I don't always have the physical copies of the books that I want to read each month. And I don't always like group them in a spot that I can see. So I always forget what's on my monthly TBR. So I've been really enjoying putting them in actual like digital lists. And I recently switched over from Goodreads to Fable to track all of my reads. And they are actually kindly the sponsor of today's video, which I'm so excited about. I have been loving using Fable because they have just so much more on there for you to use and look at. And it's super easy to switch over. All you have to do is go to your settings, go down to your data, and then click import Goodreads list and reviews. And then from there, all you have to do is log into your Goodreads and Fable will start importing all of your data. Fable isn't only a good place to like actually track your reads, but it's a great place for community as well because they have countless clubs for you to join and you can even start your own. I'm currently in one called McFadden fans because I'm a huge Freedom McFadden person. And something that's really cool about the Fable clubs is that in each club during your read, they have chapter chats. So if everybody's reading it at a different pace, you can go into each chapter and see like what your peers are saying about that chapter specifically without spoilers for the rest of the book. I love the fun and modern look to the app. You can personalize your aesthetic by changing the colors. And this is one of my absolute favorite parts about Fable is that on your profile page, they have all of your stats. So like with Goodreads, I used to have to go through my read list and see like when I read it, what I rated it, what genre it was, and that was just a lot of work. But here it tells me what books I read in what month. And you can also set your reading goal and it'll show you how close you are to accomplishing your reading goal. You can track your reading streaks and it's like a whole other social platform because you can post your reading updates, you can follow your friends. So you have an entire personalized home feed that you can go through that is all just bookish. Something else that I wanted to add really quick is that they have this cutie little character called Scout and she can recommend you books based off what you like to read. You can tell her exactly what style or genre you're wanting to read and she'll recommend you a book based off of those things that you give her. And I just think this is the coolest thing. There are so many times where I'm in the mood for a certain book and I'm like, okay, what books have like these vibes? And I just won't, like I'll have to do so much research. But if you literally just ask Scout, she'll tell you what books have those vibes. And once you're done reading a book, you can actually do half and quarter stars now for your ratings, which I think is so nice because there are so many times where I'm on Goodreads and I want to rate a book like a 3.5 or a 3.25. And I can't because they don't have quarter and half stars, but Fable does. So I just highly recommend this app and definitely think it's like the future of tracking your reads. You can download Fable for free today by clicking the link in my description. Thank you so much to Fable for sponsoring today's video. This is literally such an exciting collaboration opportunity for me. So now that I have made my November TBR list, let's get to choosing our books. So I did kind of update this. I added some new books and I took some books out from last month's TBR. So I have 36 books on my cart right now. So I'm going to do the number generator from 1 to 36. And we are going to generate our first one, which is number 8. Oh my gosh, wait, I'm so excited for this. So we got Such Charming Liars by Karen M. McManus. This is her most recent release. This one follows, I believe, like a mother-daughter duo who are jewel thieves. And they have like one last job, but at this job they run into some, I don't know if they're quite enemies or just like people they don't really want to run into. They get caught in the crosshair somehow and they become targets. So it sounds very heisty. And I'm always up for a fun heisty type of book. So generating our next one out of 35 now because I always mess that up and we got number 29 and this is Enchanted Hill and this is an adult mystery thriller I believe filled with intrigue and old Hollywood glamour. Enchanted Hill is an unforgettable sweepingly romantic novel set in a world you won't want to leave. So it follows our main character Cora and she's posing as a, as a maid working undercover at some Hollywood legendary estate. She's closing in on the evidence she needs for a high profile client. As an aspiring P.I. Cora was trained by her father, a former prison guard at the notorious Pelican Island where Cora grew up surrounded by hardened criminals, which is why she recognizes Jack Yates as soon as he walks through the door. The last time she saw him was on an ill-fated night that changed the course of, their, of her life and still haunts her more than a decade later. Cora never expected to see Jack again, and now a single misstep could cause both their secret identities to come crashing down. They strike a tentative truce to help each other during a week of parties overflowing with champagne and caviar, but there are puzzles hidden in every corner of this Hollywood legendary estate. And if Cora is to finally learn the truth about 
about Jack Yates, she must unravel a sinister history that the rich and powerful will do anything to keep concealed. It sounds very interesting, and it sounds pretty good for November. It kind of seems like it's going to be eerie a little bit. I love the old Hollywood vibe. That's new for me. I don't think I've ever really read anything that has like old Hollywood vibes. So I think that's going to be pretty fun. Oh, I think I'm going to pick, let's do seven books. I think that's a good TBR. So now we're going to do it out of 34 and generate, and we got 25. What is this? Oh, we got Legend. This one I think I've actually had on my shelf since I started reading again for fun as an adult, like two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, actually. So this one is a YA. I think it's like a dystopian novel. So this one I believe follows two main characters. And the synopsis says, what once was the Western United States is now home to the Republic, a nation perpetually at war with its neighbors. Born into an elite family in one of the Republic's wealthiest districts, 15-year-old June is a prodigy being groomed for success in the Republic's highest military circles. Born into the slums, 15-year-old Day is the country's most wanted criminal, but his motives may not be as malicious as they seem. From very different worlds, June and Day have no reason to cross paths. Until the day June's brother Matthias is offed, and Day becomes the prime suspect. Caught in the ultimate game of cat and mouse, Day is in a race for his family's survival while June seeks to avenge Matthias' death. But in a shocking turn of events, the two uncover the truth of what has really brought them together and the sinister lengths the country will go to to keep its secrets. This, for some reason, is kind of giving me, like, Shatter Me vibes just because of the, like, Republic and that whole just, like, dystopian feel, I guess. Like I said, this has been on my TBR for the longest time, so I am excited to finally maybe get to it this month. So now going back to our number generator and doing it out of... 33 and generating. So we got 23. Lots of 20s. 23. Oh, so we got love in other words. Um, I don't fully know what this is about. All I know is it is like a childhood friends to lovers and maybe a second chance romance. I can't remember. It follows our main character, Macy Sorensen. She runs into Elliot, the first and only love of her life. So yeah, maybe a second chance romance. The careful bubble she's constricted begins to dissolve. Once upon a time, Elliot was Macy's entire world, growing from her gangly bookish friend into the man who coaxed her heart open again, only to break it on the very night he declared his love for her. Told in alternating timelines between then and now, teenage Elliot and Macy grow from friends to much more, spending weekdays and lazy summers together in a house outside San Francisco, devouring books, sharing favorite words, and talking through their growing pain and triumphs. As adults, they become strangers to one another until their chance reunion. Although their memories are obscured by the acne of what happened that night so many years ago, Elliot will come to understand the truth behind Macy's, Macy's decade-long silence and will have to overcome the past and himself to revive her faith in the possibility of an all-consuming love. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. I have heard crazy good things about this book, and it was one that I was wanting to read this fall anyway, so... This was perfect. So we've got four books. Let's choose three more. And now we need to do it out of 32 and then generate three. One, two, three. Oh, we have The Traveling Cat Chronicles. This one is, I believe, a Japanese translated fiction. I have been in a weird cat mood. Like, I just love cats so much. My squishies literally just laying right in front of me and I'm obsessed with her. So I just thought it might be fun to, like, read some cat books. The synopsis says, The Traveling Cat Chronicles has charmed readers around the world with simply a descriptive prose. This novel gives voice to Nana? Nana? The cat and his owner, Sat Satoru. Sat Satoru. Satoru. As they take to the road on a journey with no other purpose than to visit three of Satoru's longtime friends, or so Nana is led to believe. With his crooked tail, a sign of good fortune, and adventurous spirit, Nana is the perfect companion for the man who took him in as a stray. And as they travel in a silver van across Japan, with its ever-changing scenery and seasons, they will learn the true meaning of courage and gratitude and loyalty and love. Why do I want to cry just reading that synopsis? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm actually so excited for this. That just sounds like my dream like traveling a beautiful place with my cat of course my husband as well that just sounds so much like me so now going back into our number generator and doing it out of 31 generate we've got 25 didn't we already get 25 1 22 23 24 25 Ooh, i'm very excited i got this one did i get this last month I don't think I did. But anyway, that's Anatomy, a love story. It says, a gothic tale full of mystery and romance. Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to marry. Jake Kerr is a resurrection man who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. So I believe this follows our main character who wants to be a surgeon, but I believe the professor of whatever 
like lectures or class that she wants to attend says that she can only attend the lectures and, and learn from him if she, I think, passes some exam. But in order to do that, she needs bodies to practice on. So then I believe Jack is, um, I think he works in the graveyard or something. And so throughout that, she gets bodies somehow and it turns into a love story of sorts. So not really sure how that goes down, but very excited to see how that happens. And I think this is a really good fall read. This was one of the ones that I was going to read in my spooky season like reading Halloween books vlog and I didn't get to it in that video so I'm excited to get to it this month if I do which I'm going to put out my priority to get it done. Okay so we have one more book to pick out. We're gonna do it out of 30 now and generate and we have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ooh we have One Step Too Far by Lisa Gardner. I feel like this was also on a recent TBR list but I could be wrong. Oh actually I did want, this is like technically like the second book in a series and I kind of wanted to read the first one before I read this one. So maybe we won't do this guy this month. I don't know. I'll put it on the side and maybe still read it, but I'm going to pick another one just in case. So doing this out of 29, I'm going to generate again, got 15. 15, we have Lonely Castle in the Mirror. This is another Japanese translated fiction about, I think it follows like six main characters. I don't know if it follows all six POVs, but I do you think it follows six characters? Oh, seven. In a neighborhood in Tokyo, seven young people wake up to find their bedroom mirrors shining. Placing their palms on the surface, they are pulled through in a wondrous castle where they encounter not only each other, but also their taskmaster, a bossy young girl in a mask named Wolf Queen. Though they don't know it yet, they all have one thing in common, eager to uncover the secrets of the castle while keeping their own. Their time here will not be without glitches. For a star, each day they must leave by five o'clock or face a terrifying penalty. They must all hunt for a key that will grant only one wish. They must tell no one about their experience. As they struggle to abide by the rules of the game and each other's emotional boundaries, a moving story unfolds of seven characters trapped in a cycle of misunderstanding and loneliness who are ultimately set free by the power of friendship, empathy, and sacrifice. This just sounds like another really cute and cozy read. I've heard a lot of really good things about it, and I think it was even made into like an anime movie of some sort. And I just love the cover of this. I think it's very cute. So those are the books that I have for my November TBR. I am keeping this on my November TBR. I just think that I might have to read because the first one is before she disappears and then it's one step too far but technically you don't have to read them in order but I would just kind of like to just for like some character development and background I guess. But going back to this one it's about a guy who disappears in the woods and our main character goes and looks for him because that's kind of like what she does is she like searches for people and she finds people. It's set in the mountains of Wyoming and so our main character Frankie goes to join the search team but as they head into the wild it becomes clear that someone out there is willing to do anything to stop them soon they're running out of time and are up against the worst man in nature have to offer discovering the evil that awaits those who go one step too far i don't think i have any other oh i guess i do have one other mystery mystery thriller i like to at least have two because these are the books that i feel like i fly through and they're good like palate cleansers in between kind of either slower books or fantasy books so i think this is a pretty good stack we've got some cozy romance we've got some gothic vibes dystopian mystery thrillers more cozy cozy vibes yeah, I feel like this is a really good like mix of genres and things. But anyway, guys, that is the end of my TBR video. Don't forget to go click the link in my description to join Fable for free today. I'm going to put all these books in my November list on my Fable and I will also link my Fable down below if you wanted to follow me. I hope you guys have a beautiful and wonderful month and I'm excited to get to these reads and film some fun videos with them. But until then, I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah!